Father, we love you. We thank you for your word today. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for these beautiful people, these hungry people that have come here to seek your face, to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you feed us through your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we have ears to hear, eyes to see, open hearts, Lord, to receive. And Lord, we won't just receive it and keep it to ourselves, but we're going to go and give it out. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. That's where I'm going to start. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because. Say because. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay, that's the two scriptures we're going to uh, talk about today. In verse 8. The Lord is telling you to be sober, be vigilant. That means be on your toes, be alert, be ready. And then he says, because. The reason that he wants you to be this way, instead of the opposite of that would be, if you're not sober, you're drunk, and means you're sloppy or, you know, no, you don't have any coherency, uh, if, if you are sober and vigilant, God says you must be this way because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, hallelujah, the defeated devil, by the way. He's still the devil. The devil, now look at this, as a roaring lion. Doesn't say he is a roaring lion, it says as a roaring lion. Well, you ever been to the zoo and seen when those lions roar? That's pretty uh, pretty awesome. Uh, very powerful. A little kitty cat. Oh, it's gone. You know, you're thinking, wow, that's a beautiful cat, and then all of a sudden they roar on you. Uh, well, that's all the devil's got in him is a roar. Uh, praise the Lord. Because of Jesus. However, there's a part we must play in this. It's telling us here. Number one, you must be sober and vigilant. Because if you're not, if you're uh, not coherent, if you're drunken, if you are uh, uh, lazy, then the adversary, your adversary, the devil... Is like a roaring lion. He's going to be roaring at you. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. I would say, and I would hope that you agree, that that indicates he's seeking those he can pick out to devour, then there would be some he'd pass by because. He's seeking the ones he can devour. There must be some indication here which ones he can devour and which ones he can't. That's the indication I'm seeing out of this. Right? So, if you're sober and vigilant, that'd be a good key that you're not going to be devoured. Hallelujah. Because you're ready, right? You're ready. As a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. That could also mean that as he roars, if you, if you express fear or if you express uh, a weakness, then he'll pick you out that way too. Hallelujah. Right? I mean, because he's going to roar. It says he's roaring. And if that roar causes you to back up, to stumble, to uh, be faint-hearted, 
Then he says, hmm, here's one I can uh, mess around with. Right? But verse 9 tells us, those of us who resist, say resist. resist. Whom resist steadfast. Well, that's a key word. He may not just roar once. The first roar may not spook you, but the second roar, when he keeps on persistently, over and over, closer and closer, could start to shake some people. Right? Well, think about it in your own life. You know, when uh, you have a pain in your body and you pass it off and you quit roaring devil, but the pain is persistent and gets worse, then uh, what do you do with it? You stop resisting or what? I mean, I, I don't, I'm asking you, I don't know. Hallelujah. Well, you can't stop because if you do, you'll be devoured. <laughs> I mean, you may stop and from personal experience from time to time just because you don't know better or maybe because something for the moment overwhelms you. But uh, I'm just giving you fair warning that uh, you can't stop. You, you have to be resisting steadfast. That means steady. Straightforward, unrelenting. Okay? You with me? So whom resist steadfast, not in your own strength, but in the faith? That's a big difference. If I'm going to stand in my own strength, I'm going to be defeated. And then I'm going to be wondering, well, why didn't you come through, God? Well, it's because I was dependent on my own wisdom, my own strength, my own ability. My own knowledge. Whatever it was I was depending on outside of the faith of God. But if I'm going to resist Satan, I must resist steadfast in the faith. Hallelujah. Now faith comes from hearing the word of God. Right? It doesn't come from me convincing myself I'm able to take the devil down. He's already down anyway. Praise the Lord. It doesn't come from me... Uh, thinking I'm smart enough or have enough knowledge or read the Bible enough times. It comes from being steadfast in faith. Now, in faith would indicate my belief, knowing whom I am in Christ Jesus. Right? Okay. Then it goes on to say, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, it's not uncommon to you. You're not the only one. That's the first line the devil wants to send to you, is that you're the only one going through this, so nobody else understands. And, uh, or he might say to you, yeah, well, you know, uh, Pastor James got healed, but this is me, and, uh, you know, he reminds you of these things maybe you've done or whatever, and try to bring condemnation on you and tell you you're not going to get it isolate you in other words well you're not the only one standing steadfast praise the Lord and in that case there is no uh, pride for having done it I, I know a, a lot of times in the faith movement uh, it can borderline pride of how much faith someone has and that's not, the, that's not God. But you know, the devil doesn't care how he gets you. He just wants to get you. In other words, he doesn't care how he deceives you. He can deceive you religious ideas that sound real Christian. He can knock you off course with uh, false teaching that sounds real biblical. Or he can come at you and make you think you're God's man of faith and power for the hour... And really, you're not. You're, you're not the only one to go through this. You're not the only one having been delivered from it. And you'll not be the only one, so you can't wear a bozo button for it. <laughs> okay? It's God. It's God. Y'all remember bozo? Bozo the clown? 
That's a long time ago. I show my age up here every week, Pastor James. Well, what I'm saying is we stand steadfast in our faith knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I looked up the word resist in the Blue Letter Bible. It, it says exactly what you would think it would say. To set oneself against, to withstand, to resist, or to oppose. That's what resist means, how it's used in the Bible. It's, it's an interesting fact that in my electronic concordance, when I type in the word resist, and ask it to find every biblical reference to it in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there are found only 14 references of the word resist. That's interesting to me because it's such an important part of Christian living. Now let me further say there was only one account in the Old Testament of resist. And that was not the people resisting Satan. It was actually Satan resisting Joshua in Zechariah 3.1. So there is no account of the word resist being used in the Old Testament. Why is that? It's a New Testament thing. Satan has been defeated since Jesus arose from the dead. It's a privilege you enjoy. They didn't know. Now, they, they had to resist evil and things like that just in a different way. They were, had to be obedient to God's word in a different way. I'm not saying that they could just do whatever. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you, spiritually speaking, now have the ability, since Jesus arose from the dead, to resist successfully the devil in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Blue Letter Bible breaks it down further and says that this uh, word that was used for resist nine times is used as resist translated resist in the Bible and five times translated withstand either way resisting withstanding means you're standing against the wickedness of the enemy and the way that you're doing that is that your knowledge that you are victorious. Not that you're going to be victorious. You are victorious. Okay? But the key here, saints, is that we must resist. We must stand our ground against satanic activity. Praise the Lord. Look in James. Just a little bit back in your Bible there. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he might flee from you. I'm glad y'all brought your Bible today. He will flee from us. doesn't say... Hopefully he will. Maybe he will. Sometimes he will. None of that is used. But it's emphatic. It says, if you'll submit yourself to God, if you will resist Satan, the devil, then the result will be he flees. So the roaring will get into a very far distance until it's all the way gone. Praise the Lord. Right? The reason I'm sharing on this today is because as a pastor, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of people that confess the word. They mentally agree with the word. They mentally agree that they're victorious. They mentally um, are in total agreement with everything that we teach. But then when the devil roars with various life circumstances, they crumble. Now this can be for several things. One of the key things is they're not 
ever yet really resisted. And that can be from immaturity. Maybe they're young in the faith. Maybe they're young in the word of faith. But the real root cause is they have no foundation on what they really believe. Maybe they're believing uh, in that area, what they're believing, because someone told them that. Someone told them God is this way. So they believe it. You understand, whether it be wrong or whether it be right information about God, if you don't have revelation, wrong or right, it still can slay you when the trial comes along. You understand that? This is not a game we're playing. This is not church fellowship, fun and whatever, club time. This is life and death. What I'm telling you this morning, you're going to face when you walk out this door. And if you don't know how to deal with it, how to handle it, then you'll come back injured. Hallelujah. But you know, I got really good news for you. No matter how injured you get, he never lets you fall all the way. Praise the Lord. We were at Loving Hands on Friday night. And, you know, Gus that comes here somewhere, the Rafina, his son is in Loving Hands over there. And... Uh, it's always good to see him. And he was sharing with us that uh, he was in a, I guess a gang, I don't know. But anyway, the, the people, he was supposed to be in a car on an evening. And the federal agents overtook the car. And somehow he had missed getting in the car. And the federal agents, agents overtook the car. And there was a gunfight. The two drivers of the car, the driver and the passenger, the two front seat people, were slain, were killed by the federal agents. And the guy in the back had on a bulletproof vest, and he lived. But uh, Gus was supposed to be in that car on whatever run they were doing. And uh, he, he asked me about that. Why did the, his friends die? And he missed it. I said, somebody somewhere along the lines praying for you. And maybe you got... You made a commitment to the Lord somewhere along your life, you know, that, to, to ask the Lord in your heart. And he said, he thought back, he said, yeah, at 14 I did. I said, see? And so God is there on your behalf. So wherever how loud the devil roars, you give yourself to God. Even if you're not skilled in these things yet, you will be. But even if you're not yet, then you cannot still be defeated, okay? So I want to encourage you. However, we're talking to people this morning that are mature people in the Lord. I know you guys. I know that you want to go further. You want to go to the next level. You're not satisfied just being a, quote, Christian. You want to really make this a lifestyle, really be victorious, really experience the life of God, John 10.10 10 talks about. And so I want to encourage you to go to the next level. I want to to stimulate you, to uh, motivate you, to make you think. Hallelujah. So that's what we're doing here this morning. So uh, I'm telling you that wherever you're at on this, uh, you've got to resist the devil steadfast in the faith, not in your strength, not in what you think is the faith, but in the real faith. Hallelujah. Now, as I see it, the proper way to resist Satan uh, is these three things. There may be more. Number one, you've got to believe the Word. From Genesis to Revelation, you've got to believe what the Word says. You can't make excuses for any of it. You can't take it out. You can't take your scissors and cut out what you don't like. If it says it, it's in there. It's for you. You believe it. And then the next thing is, you've got to believe it so much that you speak it out. It's your conversation. You don't talk like the world anymore. You talk like the Bible. Hallelujah. And the third thing is, you must stand firm knowing these things without wavering in the midst of life's circumstances. Those three things sound very easy, but each of them, are they run, the water runs real deep. Believe the word. That's your first step. You can't explain it away, excuse it away when it comes to being for you. Believe the word for you. 
Believe it so much that it gets into your heart and comes out your mouth. Instead of saying uh, uh, something bad, a fearful statement when something happens, you say the word of God. Hallelujah. Now the other day we were in the car, and I forgot what happened, but it looked like we were going to get an accident. And my wife, uh, she, instead of hollering out some cuss word or something, she hollers out, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Now we did not get in an accident, thank God. Because the angels uh, oh, it's compassed and camped around about us. Praise the Lord. But it sure looked like we were going to. It spooked her. It spooked me. It was that roar of the devil. Praise the Lord. So you speak out this words you believe because not just out of habit to, to say words out of habit knowing mentally that that's right to say it. You understand? That's what's given the word of faith a bad rap is that people memorize what other people say and they go about correcting everybody and saying things they don't even believe themselves. Hello? If you don't believe it, it's good to say it, acknowledge it, but it's still not there for the working of it. You've got to believe it so much it flows. It just comes out. It's not something I thought up. It's not something I trained for. It just flows from my heart. Jesus is Lord. By his stripes I was healed. Satan, get your filthy hands off. I'm not broke. There is no lack in my life. Get out, devil. Hallelujah. And then, because Satan is a persistent thing, you got to stand firm without wavering. Don't be calling everybody on the phone tell them how bad it is. Don't be calling everybody in the name of prayer. Now, don't get mad at me, okay? I love you. If you need to call me for prayer, I'm going to agree with you in prayer. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about don't burn up the line to everybody and their brother in your unbelief. You're going to have to believe first before that prayer is going to work. All right? Praise the Lord. Well, let's look. Hallelujah. Let's look in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus, uh, he, he's our example, right? Praise God. Matthew chapter 4, beginning of verse 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. I would say so. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. That's a roaring of the lion, right? Hallelujah. But he answered and said, Yes, I am hungry. I think I'll have some. Are you all awake? <laughs> Lisa's awake. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. I'm glad you're awake out there. Praise the Lord. He said, It is written. Meaning that is saying what the Word says. Right? <laughs> this is how he stopped the roaring of the lion. And if you don't think it's a roar, you fast 40 days and see. It wouldn't take me but two or three days it'd be roaring. Maybe even one. It's an amazing thing when I proclaim a fast, I've learned not to tell everybody because as soon as you verbalize it, then you get hungry. You know, T-bone steaks float in front of you, things that you hated before smell so good. It's the roaring of the lion there. So he says, Jesus said, verse 4, It is written, Man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
Hallelujah. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they'll dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him as the roaring came, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see how he's answering. You see how he's dealing with Satan. And then you see also that when Satan gets defeated by that resistance, he takes and offers him something else, another roar. You're no different. You understand that. Satan will do the same things. We're not ignorant of his devices. He'll do the same things to you. It won't be necessarily exact same wording, but the same circumstances, uh, the temptations, let's put it that way, the, the emotion, the temptation will be there. Praise the Lord. Verse 8, again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. All three times, it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaved him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Saints, what I'm saying to you is that uh, it's going to take some effort on your part. I hear people say, well, if it's meant to be, it'll be. I hear people say, well, God's in control. He knows what's happening. He is in control and he does know what's happening, but he has passed authority to you to stop these attacks. Thank you, Lord. If you just want to roll over and say, whatever, that's what you're going to get. And the whatever might not be so pretty. You can't listen to religious uh, jargon today and think that you'll be okay from it. You're going to have to study, research, apply these pages in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 59 and 19 says, When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Some people change the comma, and that's okay the way. I don't have a problem either way. There's no punctuation marks in the Hebrew. And so they say, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. Either way, it's good. But the way he does it is by your resisting. Resisting. The, see, understand, it's already done. The victory has been paid for. It's already done. Now you, your goal is to have it applicable in your life, working in your life. Well, one of the main ways that I see is that we must resist Satan. When the enemy comes to you with a thought of fear, what are you going to do? It is written, resist. When he comes to you with uh, ill feelings, bad feelings towards someone. What are you going to do? It is written. You must resist. That is right. When he comes to you with greed. Ooh, greed. Oh, funny. Well, hey, it tempts us all. You know, in the sales business that I'm in, it's very tempting sometimes to say information for greed's sake. Yeah. Now, I don't do that, but I'm not saying the temptation is not there when I know a thousand dollar commission is about to go down the tube. Never would, never would I lie. Never, of course not. But would you color it a little bit to get that thousand dollars? Hello. You can't do it. You can't. You can't compromise. It's thousand dollars not worth your soul. But it's not so easy when you're facing it. The devil's roaring. He's roaring real loud. Especially if the mortgage is due and the car payment and whatever else you got. What are you going to do when your emotions are raging and they're raging in the wrong way? You're going to have to resist. Young people, listen to me. Single people, listen to me. 
you're going to have to resist. What about when strife comes? What do you do? When somebody's right in your face, what are you going to do? Hey, we face it. You're going to have to resist. You have to. What do you do when sickness tries to come in your body? You got to stand against it. And you say, but pastor, I've done that. It's still there. Keep on. I can't ever find for it to say, do it a formula. You know, do it three times, twitch your ear, wink your eye, and smile real big, and it's gone. I don't see that. Look in Matthew 11, chapter, we'll close. I'm, I'm going over here, I'm sorry. Matthew 11. I could say a lot more on this, but I've said what the Holy Spirit wants to say today, so I'm going to shut up. Matthew 11. Matthew 11, you should know this by heart. Verse 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Now look at this. The violent take it by force that means there's effort on your part the effort is not in physical violence the effort is in resistance knowing who you are in Christ standing your ground without wavering no matter how bad it looks no matter how much it looks like you're going down this time you stand steadfast on the word of God amen, amen. praise the Lord well give the Lord a hand that's good yeah. hallelujah God is good Praise the Lord.